Back to Harbaugh. A month after the midterm, President Obama and Congress have a big list of things to get done, and there's little evidence that any of it will get done anytime soon. Here's President Obama on Tuesday's, actually after yesterday's meeting with Republican leaders, followed by Republican Mike Pence today on Morning Joe. Where do you catch this clash of wills here? Here it comes. It's no secret that we have had differences that have led us to part ways uh, on many issues in the past. But uh, we are Americans first, and we share a responsibility for the stewardship of our nation. Now, the American people did not vote for gridlock. They didn't vote for unyielding partisanship. I saw this morning in an article, Joe, that the president said something like the American people didn't vote for gridlock. Well, yeah, you know, they kind of did. They kind of uh, did. You know, Congress and the White House were working together pretty well the last couple of years, and the American people stood astride history here and yelled, stop. Have you noticed how well the Congress and the president worked together the last two years, guys? I'm telling you, completely fictional what I just heard there. The Daily Beast contributor Mark McKinnon here is the vice chairman of public strategies and a former advisor to W and John McCain also. And MSNBC political analyst Howard Feynman is a Huffington Post senior. In fact, he is the senior political analyst. Howard, that was complete mouthwash. There has been no deal making <laughs> the last two years. The Republicans have said no, 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 yes. no. There were just more Democrats. Yeah. And now he's saying we've been, get, we've been getting along. There's a guy who refuses to be in Republican leadership, Mike Pence. And I like him because he comes on this show. Mm -hmm. But his whole strategy is to be an outlier, to be a maverick, no deal, so he can run for president, apparently. Yeah, that's exactly right. And 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 you have that tension within, uh, as I see it. He doesn't want a deal. No, no, he doesn't want a deal. And people like Mitch McConnell, the Republican leader in the Senate, are taking the posture right now that they want no deal. I, I think, except on taxes... He wants nothing but that. I don't know if he'll be able to maintain that to the end, but that's what he's going to do. Is this to do. all a reaction to the fact that Charlie Crist hugged the president last year <laughs> and it was never able to shake him? But if you have any, if you're a Republican, let's take it from the right side here. If you have anything to do with a Democrat, like touch him, anything more than a fist bump, <laughs> you're the problem. I think it's a huge overreaction and a misreading of the election, and I and I think that we're that they're Republicans. And you're taking, sort of center right, a, right? I'm a, you... I'm a radical centrist, but I'm a proud Republican. Uh, but but I worry when I see us going back to the days of shutting down government. I, I remember what happened the last time we did that. I think Republicans are wrong, and I was glad to see Marco Rubio and others. Who wins when they, if we have another sort of crazy Newt Gingrich shutdown? I think the Republicans lose. I, I really do. I think the I think the American people do want us to work together. They do want to see progress. Uh, and, and they want to see bipartisanship, and 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 I, I think that that's a short-term strategy. That uh, what was Pence talking about there? He says that gridlock is popular. Is it? Well, gridlock is popular with his people, the people he's going to appeal to when he runs for so president. So they don't want a deal on taxes. They, therefore, no, the they taxes want, no. will go up. They, they, the, the Republicans that I talk to on the Hill, and I spend a lot of time talking to them up there, they believe that they can get. A several year extension okay, okay, of that's all not the, the tax same as cuts. Gridlock. That's hardball. No, that's hardball. That's what they want. That's what Pence wants at a minimum. Beyond that, they don't want anything. So this isn't gridlock they want. You're saying the Republicans think they can tough it out and get what yeah. they want by Christmas, yeah. and then it'll be the big winners. They want no lock or some other word, but gridlock. They, yeah. they, they, gridlock they, means they, nothing because yeah. Yeah. they don't really want to get blamed for unemployment benefits. From their being point cut of view, off. from their point of view, the absence of anything passing but a continuation of the tax cuts is not gridlock. It's victory. Republicans want change. They want change from the status quo. Well, let me ask you about this, because in the end, the Constitution is written, as everybody watching knows, it's written delicately to require some kind of balance in the end. We've got uh, an incoming Republican House, but we still have a Democratic House. We've got a Republican minority that's strong enough to stop anything from happening in the Senate. So it's, it's both sides have to cooperate to get anything done. It's bottom line. So if there's going to be a, re a tax cut continuing through next year, there has to be a bill signing. There has to be a bill that's exactly the same. The president has to sign both. He has to sign a bill that comes out of the House and the Senate. So all this talk. Mm -hmm. I like the first session. We had Wiener on and we had Kingston. <laughs> they basically admitted that all this is going to go on yeah. for three weeks and then there's going to be an agreement. Well, Wiener didn't exactly admit it, but you know that's what he was thinking. And, and I think Kingston's right. I think. So who's this for? There's no vote between this, now. This, this who's is... going to vote between now and December 17th or 18th? There's no election. Yeah. So who are they campaigning well, one, with? One, one way you know that that's what they're all thinking thinking is that they just temporarily extended the continuing resolution to fund the government, I yeah. think, until the 17th. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's when they're thinking okay. the let's real game. About, let's that's when they're thinking the real game. Okay, let me talk begin. about the President of the United States. President Obama, as we all know, was elected with 53% of the electorate. 53%. Of that, 20 to 25 are probably self-described progressives, right? About half. 
at the most. He needs moderates and progressives to govern and to continue governing if he wants a second term. We assume he does, right? Mm -hmm. So he has to balance between the progressives who make a lot of noise and the moderates who just sort of sit there quietly and sort of decide, then vote. Right? Mm -hmm. How does he do it? Where does he go? Does he lean over to the left? Does he stick to the center and make the best deal he can? Or does he play Harry Truman, scream a lot, and not deal with it? Well, first of all, screaming a lot and playing Harry Truman doesn't seem to be Barack Obama's style. He set up this working group in part so he could play the judicious one on in taxes. The end, yeah. On taxes, so he could be the judicious one. I think he, he set it up with four out of six Democrats. Right, though. but he understands that the hard bargaining is coming in the end, and I think he's going to continue to try to play it down the middle. I don't think he's doing enough, frankly, at least in the music of it, for the left wing of his own party. I don't hear the White House, for example, saying very much about unemployment mm -hmm. insurance and the fact that it's suspended. Why doesn't he go suspended. to Detroit or someplace where there's I, I don't a lot of unemployed people? I don't at least understand. Have a sandwich with him and a cup I, of coffee. I, I don't know. It seems kind of aloof. I just don't understand it. You have Democrats on the Hill complaining about it, but where is Barack Obama pounding the table and saying, "Look, guys, whatever else you're going to do on the Hill, let's." Okay. That's see what's going to be to be an easy Democrat. Let me, let me say something. Right a lot, of, a lot of liberals know. won't say. Most Republicans and those watching will agree with me. Are not rich. They have a portion of the party that's very well off, as the Democrats have some rich people, too, obviously. So portraying them as the party of the rich is stupid. So why would the Republican Party fight like hell for the, top, the tax breaks of the top 2%? Why is this smart politics on the Republican side? Let's go to their side. Well, the fight uh, for the rich, uh, be because I think that a, a lot of them are convinced that even that two percent are job creators, and it's and it's all about jobs. And they're keeping their focus there. But let me just say, I was happy to see about the president today that uh, in a story that revealed that he says privately that he's a blue dog Democrat. And I think that's where most of America is. They're either blue dog Democrats or they're sort of soft progressive that's Republicans. Right, that's where the vast America. They're not hyper partisan. Do you think we're center left or center right as a country? That's the bottom line. The president has to decide. I think, we're, I think we're center right, but I think it's vast. So if he wants center. to get reelected, he better damn well not go too far. My, my, right. my only point is, especially at a time when it looks like they've already given up on allowing a two or three year extension of all the tax cuts, including for the rich. What downside would there be politically for the president to get out there and say okay. some stuff so about what, unemployment? So what insurance. you're saying is a lot of it's body language. Yeah. Even even if he ends up cutting a deal before Christmas, yeah. he has to cut a deal to get the tax cuts. Seems to me it's no cost to, body language for well, that. Why doesn't he do it? Why does he get after he complains? I, I can't. I can't give you an answer to that because is it because there's some logic here? Yeah. I don't want to be identified with long-term unemployment and joblessness and hopelessness. I don't want to well, be the bad so. news president. Yeah. I keep I think, thinking I think, that's right. I think that's right. I think that's, that's, right. Right. that's, that's right. a lot of what President Bush used to say. Is nobody wants to say, you know, things are, have gone to hell, follow me. That's true, and it's a, you're right. And I think it's also true, if you look at the few trips that the president has made out into the country the last few weeks, he's gone to places where there are new jobs, where there's yeah, advanced I'm technology. You, by the way, I'm with you. Yeah. I think he's got to do both. Do the Sunrise Industries and hang around yeah. the Rust Belt. Yeah. This thing I've been talking about from Scranton to Oshkosh, mm -hmm. that part of the country is gone for the Democrats right now. Yeah. Ohio is almost unreachable at this well, point next time. They've got to get in there and show they care. That's what I think. Yeah, that's what's going to be one or lost. And as I always like to remind myself, I may be dead wrong, but not on this one. <laughs> not on this, baby. <laughs> they, you're, right. you're right. You've gotten into the truth there. He's got to show some heart about people out of work. Mark McKinnon, smart guy. Center right. Howard Feynman, can't tell. <laughs>